No, and look, if, if property was part of my wealth growth strategy, and it will be at some point, I would do it, but it's not. Owning the most irrigation shops in the country and turning over the most amount of money selling irrigation is my strategy, so. Sorry. You see your email? Oh, another journey begins. Uh, don't touch me, gastro boy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wondering what that was about, we put in an offer on a, another warehouse. We're renting another warehouse. It's just been accepted, which is pretty f***ing exciting. Um, it's massive too. 1,000 square meter warehouse with a 3,500 square meter hard stand. Um, we haven't really spoken too much about it because I was a bit concerned about us not getting approval on the on the building. But we've just received an email from the landlord saying that they have come back to us with a counter offer. I, I put an offer forward of a five plus five year term uh, and they've come back with three plus five, which is more in line with what I wanted anyway, because five years is a long time, especially for a company that moves as fast as we do. So now we need to go through the process of getting organized. So. I guess I'll, I'll talk through the, what's happened so far for anyone that's looking at this from um, if, they're, if you're interested in how this all works. So we decided we needed uh, more land and an area to store more irrigation. It's my belief that irrigation is going to become harder to get in the next 12 months because of uh, international freight, um, transport planes aren't flying around as much. Uh, manufacturing facilities being shut down due to COVID, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're still off the back of the bushfires that we had in Australia what, 12 months ago now, but all the insurance is gonna come through for a lot of those vineyards that need to buy drip tube and that. So I thought, let's get a big warehouse. We're, we've outgrown Kent Town anyway. Lawn Hub needs a new location, so we've gone shop shopping for a warehouse. It popped up on the real estate websites. We, we would get notified, so we, we kind of um, set it up so that if anything inside our area was of interest it would get sent to us, this popped up. Uh, Lisa emailed them, booked us an appointment for 9.30 the next morning. Matt and I were down there at 9.30 the next morning. Spoke to the agent. Uh, the rent was very much below market, we believed. So we, we didn't try to negotiate on rent and it was really about us putting forward our best offer as a tenant. Uh, the, the offer, when I say our best offer as a tenant, so that was including things like um, what, you know, um, what changes we would need to make to the building or what um, you know, outgoings we wanted to negotiate. There's furniture in the building, we've negotiated to keep that furniture at no cost. There was a forklift in the warehouse, I tried to negotiate to keep that forklift at no cost. They weren't massive fans of that one. Uh, then the term, so obviously, if you're a smaller business, you might go in and maybe do a one plus one or a one plus two or a two plus one or whatever. Uh, we went in there as five plus five because we knew that the landlords and the owners of the building would see that as a positive. It means that they don't have to rehire someone to go try and find a new tenant in five years and you, do, you don't have that cost of maybe having an empty, empty building while you're looking for people. So we sent that forward and then all of the changes and improvements that we wanted to make to the building, we've put that forward as well. Um, so they've come back to us. We will now have a lease prepared. So usually with a commercial tenancy, the ones I've had in the past, the lease cost is split 50-50 between us and the people that own the building. Uh, a lease could cost $600 to $1,200 to prepare, or at least it did last time. They're pretty general. Um, we pay that our halve. Something new that's popped up, which I kind of hate and I think it's shit, but you kind of have to, we don't have the power because we want the building more than they want the tenant at the moment, I think. Uh, so there's a bank guarantee required, so we have to go to the bank and get a bank guarantee. Now, a bank guarantee is effectively like a pre-approved loan that they can draw on if we default on the building. So that's the three months of that is enough money for them to cover their costs and kick us out. Um, I don't like the idea of having a bank guarantee there because it's just more debt that's sitting there. Even though it's not debt that we're using, we pay an, a yearly fee to have it sitting there. But then there's also, um, when I go to borrow, borrow money, it's like if you have a credit card and you're trying to borrow money to buy a house, they're like, but you've got a 12 grand credit card. And the person goes, yeah, but I'm not using it. And they're like, yeah, but it's still there for you. So they have to include it. Then we have to go talk to our insurance broker, get insurance for the building. As tenants, we're responsible for the glass. 
and some other stuff were responsible for security were responsible for landscaping they, they had landscaping as a cost in the outgoings which was stupid because it's like six dead diosmas in a garden bed so i think it was they were charging three and a half grand a year to maintain that we changed that we're going to do that ourselves so they'll get the lease drawn up now we've got to go through the process of um, planning the building and the outlay um, i'm going to take this because I need to. Hey, it'll hold a lot of stock. Like I, I'm planning to hold, you know, 63 mil, 90 mil blue line. The kind of shit where someone like you would roll in because you're you on a Friday and go, oh, I'm just doing an oval tomorrow and you could take the whole lot. Yep. Yep. Well, I think that that's going to be a point of difference for us moving forward is to have the most stock. Another point of difference so that if someone's like, you know, like you, you're very spontaneous. You got, you're like, I want to do an oval. Okay. Easy. We've got it got it here all right so sorry i've been chasing that guy um all day i meditated yesterday and got this like massive board nothing that you can probably show on camera but um got this massive board of things that i needed to do um and have done like four of them <laughs> so i still have to meditate again today which is now like 12 o'clock that's meant to happen earlier so off the back of that um we'll get the warehouse It'll be our third location. Um, if that conversation I just had with him gets used in the video, then you'll hear, you know, we've, we're gonna fill it with a lot of stock. Uh, we wanna have more stock than anyone. We think it's gonna be a big point of difference for our business moving forward. So that, you, you know, there's not, you're not waiting on anything. Uh, the manufacturers are holding less and less stock. A lot of the manufacturers we deal with, or some of the manufacturers we deal with are shareholder driven, board driven, CEO managed businesses that have to meet certain KPIs and sometimes if things are quiet, their stock holding goes down, the CEO gets a bonus maybe. So they're holding less and less stock. So we're ordering stuff and we're not getting it. Um, obviously that's in addition to the COVID concerns. So if we hold more stock, if we can hold two months worth of stock, three months worth of stock, we're always a, a month or two ahead. So if a big project comes through, we're likely to win it. So what happens next is I, I finish adding all of those costs into my budget. So I had a, a budget in Excel, uh, a very intricate budget which is pretty crazy with the, all of our costs um we add the rent we add the outgoings outgoings is a cost that you pay as a as a as a tenant to cover all the other shit that like water um anything the landlord has to pay you pay most of the time insurance um sometimes eight real estate agents fees and then we will get the cost of new pallet racking we need another forklift, we need insurance. The girl's already got a quote on the insurance. I think it was another six or $7,000 a year to ensure that building for fire and theft. Obviously, we're gonna have a lot of stock there. Uh, and then we work out the plan to move everyone in. So today is January the 12th. We're looking to move in on the 1st of March. According to their email I've just got, we need to buy pallet racking, forklift, uh, design the area. Lawn Hub's gonna be out there as well. So we've got a fertilizer hopper manufacturing facility coming in. Uh, had a contract signed, an employee contract signed, doesn't say who it is with, employee contract signed with our first Lawn Hub employee. Uh, he starts Feb 8, uh, which is really exciting. He has a background in turf management. Anyone who watches a lot of our content will probably be able to work it out pretty easily. Uh, so he'll be based out there along with uh, some of the team from WaterPro and it will alleviate some of the concerns we've got about car parking here and uh, other things. So stock safety, that's a big one as well that we have to concentrate on. As we get bigger, uh, it's almost part of this like zero to $5 million. You're just kind of running as fast as you can to get all the sales. And then once you get into the bracket where we are, where you're in that 10 to $15 million bracket, a lot of safety comes up. Um, you know, there's a lot more people. There's a lot more people that are coming on board quickly and they need to be trained. So safety is something that we've been focusing on. So this new warehouse gives, gives us a good opportunity to get it right first time, knowing what we know now, because obviously we've learned a lot. And then we start trading out of there. So um, yeah, that's what's happened so far today. And um, what I'll, I'll keep, we'll keep vlogging as much as we can around this, because I think it might be valuable to people that are looking for um, to open a new business and how to negotiate a lease or how to best represent re represent yourself to to the real estate agent. So I'll cover that bit now because I think it's important. When I went and met with the real estate agent, uh, my from that point I was 
selling myself and selling my business because there was actually another pair of dudes there with a camera, which was pretty funny because we didn't take Duffy. I didn't even think about it. Um, and they were vlogging and I was like, well, what are these dudes doing? So I was selling myself to this guy to, because the real estate agent is going to be one of the people that the owner of the building leans on to work out whether or not they think that we're going to be a good tenant or not. Uh, this, this particular building is owned by a corporate, so it's really just going to be some dude in an office or some chick in an office that just ticks off on his recommendation. So I was selling myself from, the, from day one, talking about our plans, what we've done, how many buildings we currently rent, our conduct, conduct with our current landlords, um, bringing up things that most people wouldn't know, like the bank guarantee. I'm asking questions like, hey, um, are these guys going to look for a, a bond or a bank guarantee? So that he's thinking, oh, no shit, this guy's done this before. They're not a, they're not a rent risk. Um, we talk about negotiating the price. We both agree that the price is below market. He knew that, we knew that but we wanted him to know that we knew that so that he wasn't just thinking that we're fresh. A lot of times when you're new in business and you're going to try and negotiate a lease, if, it, if it's too easy for them, for an experienced landlord, they're gonna be concerned because they're gonna say, hang on a second, is this guy or girl, or guys and girls, gonna still be in business in a year? Because if they're not negotiating their rent and they're not talking about the outgoings and what percentage they are and they're not talking about bank guarantees, are they talking about how much profit they need to make to pay their rent? Are they talking about um, the legislative requirements they need to meet with the government around BAS and IAS and super? Are they talking about the profit margin they need to make to cover wages and rent? So we were selling ourselves from the start and I think that, that served us well. We offered a long lease term. They cut it back, which is interesting and I'm happy with it. Um, and then we'll just keep documenting more and more and more along the way around the pallet racking, so whether or not we buy secondhand or new, if we can go find pallet racking, if there's an auction coming up, so I'm gonna start looking at like MGS auctions, Mason Gray Strange is MGS, um, Evans and Clark, other places, Marketplace, eBay. We'll try and bootstrap this business as much as we can for things that don't matter. So pallet racking provided that it's still strong and it meets the Australian safety standards, it doesn't matter if the paint's chipped, I'll buy it. But the new server that we have there, or we don't even have a server, we're cloud-based, but the, the phone system will be top shelf, but we'll buy it on eBay, not from a phone company because I've got an IT guy that can set it up for me for like a third of the price. So we'll start looking at all that now. The great thing is with the phone system, we've got a VoIP system, so the phone number will just stay the same and it'll all be one. So there's a big list of things that we're gonna have to knock off over the next four to six weeks for this building, in addition to still trying to run these businesses and grow these businesses and um, we are about to enter what I believe to be the most buoyant period in my business life ever due to the amount of money in the economy around construction in South Australia at the moment. And our biggest risk right now is not being able to scrape up all of the business that's there because we're so busy doing so much. So if you're in business in South Australia now and you're not busy, um, I would be looking at that if you're in the construction industry or the supply industry for the construction industry. Um, and if you're new in the construction or supply industry right now and you are doing very well, make sure it's because you're good and not because you're lucky because you've all heard the saying a rising tide raises all ships and right now the tide is high. So um, if you're making money, save some of it in the bank because it will rain again. So this is the fun part. It's funny, Matt just asked me if I was excited. I am excited, but it doesn't excite me as much as it will the team. So let's head over to Water Pro and we'll tell some of the guys that we got it. I really want to see Jared's face. We got that warehouse. Oh yeah. Fucking <laughs> loving it. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta love that. That's, that's going to catch yeah, on. Yeah, boy. Um, I wanted to catch your reaction. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, man, funny enough, me and Mudge were talking about it before. He, he just tried ringing me before, actually. I just yeah, got an email back from him. Put in my lunch off was worth it. Your, no tomato sauce, no onions. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Matt last night, I'd be a couple of late nights because uh, it'd be something that's like a week process and it'll be done in two days. March 1st is the proposed date that we'll move there, so. Um, yeah, start thinking about. Yeah, you told me to start thinking about shelving and stuff. And yeah, so I want to get a cash to draw up a, 
a plan of the actual warehouse yeah. and then tell you where can be irrigation yeah. and then start thinking about how that looks like i might even see if we can get a few of us to go down there yeah. beforehand and just walk around and so you can because it's the photos on the website don't really sh like do it justice to see it to, to and there's like a little area that you can have a shop which is where you'd have a counter for maybe two or three person counter here, yeah yeah you don't want to come for a drive mate you're gonna get heaps more room think of all the people that you're not gonna have any now yeah an office too does he? No, nah, because that's turning back into a... <laughs> well, who knows, man. We might put Chris out the back. We'll see how he goes. <laughs> the further back he is, the less people he has to talk to. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to let you know. No, so, cool. th start thinking about that. No, nice. um, I kind of want you to think about how many pallet spaces you think you need. That's probably the big one. 80? Did you say 80? We have about 30... Did he say 80? No, that's just a start with. Because if you walk outside <laughs> and you look to the left out there, yeah. just on the left, that's 30. Then in, in brackets, Clint goes to search for a fourth warehouse. <laughs> no, one, one you, you would... six on, like, one, yeah. that's one thing is six. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, six so that's what I mean by 80. 20, 20, 20, 30. So that's what I mean, yeah. Like, acting like we're going three across. 80, cool, man, that's yeah. 80 pallets, spaces. Yeah, yeah, that's literally, like, just a bit more what we have. Yeah. It's not, bigger, not dramatic. Bigger picture. Okay. Bigger warehouse. Outside the square, that kind of. We walk in, I pretty much go <laughs> drip tube, poly, like it's going to be dedicated spots and everything has its pallet spots above. All right, I'll get you a pallet plan and then you can show me how you're going to fill it. Yep. All right, sweet. You sound excited. Everyone sounds excited. Yeah, it looks worry, delicious. Mate, we're going to smash this. You're going to be shredded, mate. You, do, you eat that. Look, I've only got one chin. <laughs> do you want one? I've got a few I can spare. <laughs> I used to have four. I've only got one chin now. Yeah, you keep eating like that, you'll start having like. Seven kilos. Muscles popping out here. Yeah, I thought, I was wondering what that was. Yeah, they're not really. I've seen ribs. that since I was like 16. I've never had them. I was born fat. Oh, you've had them, but you just never saw them. Yeah, so <laughs> that puppy fat that they talk about when you're three or four, yeah, I still have it at 38. <laughs> anyway. Every, you know, I reckon I opened beer last time every I saw job, you here. Yeah. I do buy a lot of beer. I don't want to open it now. Because last time I did, I ended up giving him one. <laughs> Have you seen these? Oh. F year 2021 and f you 2020. <laughs> That's good. What is that? Garage project. I, I think they're just like, they'll be a hazy. 8%. Lovely, lazy, hazy. Who are you getting yours off? I buy these straight from Garage Project. You don't want to see if anyone else wants food? Look at that. Look at this one, dude. <laughs> Part of the reason for us to moving is because, of, as you can see, it's just getting out of control. So it's, Jan it's obviously second week of January. Um, the warehouse is in better condition than it has been for a long time because everything's kind of chill now, but it's still not great. So if you look, I mean, up on that mezzanine, there's everywhere. Um, if we can start clearing all that out, give these guys some room to move, um, you know, to be able to access, what's that? Clear out in here. Hey, you in the bushes. Yeah, so... Uh, I didn't realise the girls had already started mapping out tasks for the new building. Um, I've probably mentioned it in vlogs before, but we use Asana for that, which is A-S-A-N-A dot -A -A com. It's kind of like Trello or Slack or Monday dot com, depending on... If you search Asana on Google, monday.com is the ad above it. So they've put all these tasks in there and I said, have you made me a follower? And they said, yes. So uh, technology only works if you use it. Clint's tip <laughs> of the day. So I'm just gonna have a look now. Have a look, at, I'll come and have a look at it. I'll show you on the screen. So this is our Asana. Um, so would it be a warehouse? I oh, know, I'll go to my inbox, all right. So then I've got updates from here, which probably don't put any of that in. Um, <laughs> that's just Mudge doing a good job. Come on. So it kind of, the inbox runs a bit like a, um, an email inbox so i'll read that i can like it like a facebook like just blur out the text 
and then I can comment back to Mudge, and then these are all the followers of that task, so I can see it, Matt can see it, Brandon can see it, Chris can see it, Luke can see it. Luke's the manager at Railways for anyone watching at home. All right, warehouse move, here we go. So the girls, sorry, Lisa, has set up a task and made me, Lisa, Kate, Jaron, Matt, and Jared followers of that task, which are all the people that are gonna be responsible for participating in the creation of the move. So this is good, I didn't think about electricity, internet, pallet racking, signage, security. We have to break the lease here, which um, is gonna be something I haven't done before, so that could be an interesting experience. When I say interesting, I mean expensive. Forklift bins, yeah, Veolia, because they're across the road, um, and the furniture. So it's good to have all that into a task management platform, especially if you're like me and you've got a million things going through your head at once. Once they're in there and they're being allocated to the team, it kind of takes that pressure away from me having to think about it. And if my, like, this desk's a really bad example, but a clean workspace is a clean mind, is a productive mind kind of thing. My mind is like, the best description I can think of off the cuff is the color run. If anyone's ever seen the color run, all that powder that's being thrown around at one time and blowing off people, that's the inside of my head all the time. That's the best way I could describe it. It's like a galaxy of powder. So Asana helps me with that galaxy of powder and then I can delegate it out and it becomes a more of a black sky with just some stars that I can focus on and some big planets which are Lawn Hub Railways and Water Pro. Anyway, it's probably enough from me for today. I've got a lot of to do. I need to go meditate and start working through that list of stuff. As always, if you are enjoying this content, please comment and make sure you've subscribed. And if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments. And if not, don't. And actually, one interesting point, we've had some feedback from people that has been not negative, but constructive around some of the content we've been doing. So um, I'm open to that, like I'm all for it. If you think that there's a better angle that we can do on a controller when we're showing how to use it, I didn't think of that when I was making the video, but it makes sense. So chuck those comments in there as well. Um, be kind to each other and I'll see you next vlog.